Hello, this is Reza from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about data pipeline execution order and the output state that we have for activities. This is quite important when you try to orchestrate a process when you want to design an execution order inside the data pipeline, how that uh, sequential or parallel execution would work. Uh, some basic principles, but very important. Let's go and check it out. So the idea for this came from um, a question that I got on uh, the previous video that I had about refreshing Power BI semantic model after refreshing Dataflow, which I explained how you can do that uh, using data pipeline. Uh, in that, I, there was a question about how if I have like multiple data flows, how can I make sure that they are executed first, then the data flow is executed, uh, which brought me into thinking that uh, let's do a video and uh, a blog and explain about how the execution order is, in which situation they execute in parallel, in which ex uh, situations these activities execute in, uh, in a sequence. So let's uh, check it out. I'll share my screen. So here is my screen. Uh, and uh, before talking about that, I'll just give you a very quick introduction to what data pipeline is, because this might be your first experience with the data pipeline. In Microsoft Fabric, we have data factory, which is the component we use for um, data integration. And data pipeline is one of the components in that workload, in data factory workload. Uh, the other component is data flow, which is for data transformation. Data pipeline is, however, for orchestration or what we call as a control flow execution. Here we have a, a different set of activities. As you can see, we have an activity for data flow, notebook, uh, SQL script, stored procedures, if condition, for each loop, things like that. And you can bring these activities and then you can control how they would execute. For example, in this uh, pipeline that you see right now, I have three activities. It is executing a data flow first, then it is refreshing a Power BI semantic model, and then it is sending an email. This is a pipeline. And if you are interested in learning more about pipeline, I have a separate video about that. So I'm not going into uh, details of what pipeline is any more than what I explained right now. Uh, this video, however, is about how you can control what task or what activity runs after the other activity. Here, as you can see, there are some lines or some arrows between the activities. These are um, the sequence that you define and you would say, I want the other activity to run after this activity. For example, if there is no um, arrow between these, this means that when I run the pipeline, these two would start at the same time. Uh, whereas, uh, and it doesn't matter where they are, like it can be here, it can be there, they can be like beside each other like that or underneath each other. It doesn't really matter. When you have an activity that doesn't have any arrow pointing to it, that would be your starting activity in the pipeline. In this case, I have two activities that would start the pipeline. But just for you to have a logical understanding of how this works, it makes sense to have them like um, on the same, sometimes horizontal line, sometimes vertical line, things like that. Uh, so in this case, these, would, these two would run uh, at the same time. Whereas comparing these two, uh, comparing the, that with these two, uh, the situation to execute these would be sequential. So in this case, the semantic model refresh would run first. When the refresh, of, when the execution of that is completed, and there are different completion states, then Office 365 Outlook activity would run, which in this case would send an email, right? So there is a sequence. There is no way that this would run before that, or even this would run at the same time as that. This line ensures that, this arrow ensures that this would run after that. So you have a first activity, you have a second activity in this case. How would you define these lines? So you can just um, drag these from one of the output states, which brings us to a really important concept in um, data factory or in let's say data pipeline in this case, which is output state. As you can see, and I'll zoom in in one of these activities so that you can see there are four output states. Each of these output states are determining in what situation you would want the subsequent activity to run. 
For example, when I connect this one, which is a check mark on success to this activity, what this means is that um, the semantic model refreshed activity would only run when the data flow activity executed successfully, completed successfully, right? That is what this means. And there are four output states. So this is quite self-explanatory on success. When this is successfully completed, this is on failure. When it is uh, failed, and usually we connect that to a script activity or a stored procedure activity or a notebook activity, any activity that we would use to log something in a table, in a file, usually we use on failure quite a lot for that. Or sometimes you also send a notification based on that. Then we have on completion. On completion means that um, I don't really care for this activity. Is it completed successfully or completed on a failure? I want this to uh, the next one to run. Like for example, here you see that semantic model refresh. Even if it is failed, I still want this to um, to close. Sorry, I should have closed my Teams meeting. Uh, so here it is. Uh, so if the semantic model refresh uh, failed or succeeded, I still want to send an email and say this data, this pipeline executed. It, might, it may not have executed successfully, but I want to send that, right? So that is why I connected the on completion, right? And then we have one other one, which is the skip. A skip is a situation that doesn't happen always. It happens only in certain situations. Uh, and, and how that works, a skip is for situation that this activity is supposed to run in some scenarios, but it doesn't run because of some situation. Uh, just give you an example is that if I have an if condition, inside if condition, uh, you usually have a then and an else. So depending on your condition, only then or only else would be executed. So the activities that you have in there, one of them would be executed, the other one would be skipped. And that is what that skip means. Uh, usually we also use that to do some logging, like connecting that to an activity that we would use that for logging. So that is the output states. And you can connect these two different, uh, di different output states to different activities, like what, for example, you can see here that I have, um, not this one, but let's, let's just change this one so that you get an idea. So in here, let's say I'll remove this one and I'll bring here this activity and I connect on failure to this. So what this means is that when the data flow, so when we run the, um, the data pipeline, first data flow would execute. If it was successful, then semantic model refresh would happen. If that was failed, Office 365 Outlook would execute and the semantic model refresh would not happen at all, right? So that is how I control the execution, like on success go to this, on failure go to that, which is quite simple to understand and easy to use. We usually use on failure to uh, connect to some activities that does um, logging. And it is quite common that you create a pipeline that does logging with some different activities and then use something like invoke pipeline and bring that to the, connect that to the on failure uh, of other activities, right? That is a separate subject for itself. Now, what happens if you have multiple activities connecting to the same activity? Uh, here I have uh, another situation for that. So let me go and bring one of my pipelines. By the way, if you never use this feature in uh, Microsoft Fabric, if you have a workspace with tons of uh, items, one really easy way to filter it is you can click here, filter, and you can filter it by the type, and then you can choose pipeline, and then you'll see all the pipelines only. Right, so here I have the pipelines and I'm going to just have one of these, let's say this pipeline. And I'm just going to add a few activities here just to give you an idea. Let's say I have a data flow activity and I'm not going to add any data flow into that just to give you an idea. Let's say I have this data flow activity. I have a notebook activity as well. And I have uh, these two connected to a, let's say, semantic model refresh activity. So if I connect the success of this to this and success of that to that, situation like this, which I connected the success of both of these into that, this means that 
uh, when we run the pipeline, the semantic model refresh would only happen after successfully completion of both of these, not one of them. Like for example, if the data flow refresh finished, but the notebook execution is still going, this one would wait until that one is also completed successfully. That is what this means when you connect multiple to one. It's an and of all of these. So if you have, let's say, even three activities, let's say I have another notebook here as well, and I'll connect this one here. This means that all the three should be completed successfully. Now you might change one of these. And one of the ways that you can actually change the uh, output state is by right click on this line and you can choose what output state you want. For example, I can change this to completion. So this means that I want the other two to be successfully completed. For this one, I don't really care. Uh, this might be successfully completed or may not. I want it to be completed though before doing that. So in this case, the semantic model refresh would only happen after all of these three are completed. Two of them should be certainly executed successfully. This one, I don't care successfully or failed, but I want the execution to be finished before running that. This is what the order of things means. And then you can use this to uh, do quite a lot of interesting uh, scenarios. Like for example, one scenario is that you might have a staging environment. Let's say for example, this is my, um, this is my data flow for a staging. I can call it like, let's say a staging from, um, let's say in this case, SQL Server. Uh, and then let's say this is also a process for a staging from web source. And we can say I have another data flow also that this data flow is staging from um, CRM system, things like that. Imagine there are different data flows and I don't want this, so let's get rid of that, making this a little bit bigger so that you can see. Um, and then I want this to be connected to another data flow, so I'll remove these. So this is semantic model refresh, but then here I would have a data flow that creates, in this case, let's say my data warehouse, so uh, populate dimension and fact tables, right? So if I zoom in a little bit, now these are not really connected to any data flows or anything like that. I'm just giving you an idea of a real world situation. So let's say I have this scenario that I have three different staging sources. Data comes from CRM system, data comes from a web source, data comes from SQL Server. I use different processes to populate that information. For SQL Server, I get a data flow to do that transformation uh, or staging of that. Uh, I use the data flow for getting data from CRM as well, but I use a notebook Python code to get something from the web source. Uh, once I, br I bring all of those into the staging warehouse or lake house or whatever it is, then only then I want to populate fact tables and dimension tables because if I do that before that, if only one of these is populated, then my mm, dimension and fact tables would not be uh, complete data, right? So what I'll do is I'll connect on success of all of these to that. So this means that these three activities, they would start at the same time, but they may not all finish at the same time. For example, the web source might be a little bit slower. SQL Server might be a faster source. CRM might be uh, something in between. Uh, this data flow for populating fact and dimension would wait until all of these three are executed successfully. When they are executed successfully, then this will execute. And when this is executed, then I want the semantic model refresh to happen. So I connect that. So this means that I run those three almost in parallel. At least they would start in parallel. They may not finish at the same time, but they would run in parallel. Then I run this data flow in a sequence after that. And then I run the semantic model refresh even after that. Uh, there are many scenarios you can use this for. That video that I mentioned about refreshing your Power BI semantic model after refreshing the data flow is one of those examples. 
controlling the execution of elements inside the uh, inside the data pipeline is one of the important things that you can do inside the data pipeline. It is one of the basic and principles, but it is important to know. You can also implement an OR condition that if um, this one or the other one, one of them successfully completed, you want the next activity to run, but that would be the subject for another video. In this video, we just talked about the built-in scenarios and things like that. I hope you liked this video. And if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.